Hello and thank you for joining me at Ladies in Tech. Make sure before the video is done or before you leave that you subscribe. Thanks. Hello and welcome to Ladies in Tech. This video is going to be on parallel circuits. The circuit in front of you is a true parallel circuit. There's nothing else happening but a bunch of parallelism. <laughs> Anyways, so what we have is a 12 volt DC battery and it's supplying power to this circuit and in this circuit we have R1, R2, and R3 and they are all in parallel with each other. R1 being a 1 kilo ohm resistor, R2 being a 220 ohm resistor, and R3 being a 560 ohm resistor. So what we're going to do, we're going to solve this problem. We're going to solve some unknowns in this circuit. Um, we know that there's only three paths that the current can take the path down R1, so it would go from the positive side of the battery through the branch in R1 and then return to the negative. We can take R2 path or R3 path, so that's which way the current's going to flow in this circuit. Before we start, let's talk about some rules to remember while we're solving this problem. Alright, so rule number one for a parallel circuit is that voltage is the same in, a para in all parallel branches. Okay, So each of the branches that we just went over there, R1, R2, R3, the voltage will be the same. So if I tell ask you for V1, V1 voltage for that path is going to be 12 volts. R2, 12 volts. R3, 12 volts. Rule number two. In a parallel circuit, to find total resistance, we use the following formula. R total is going to equal 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. When I say 1 over, it's the same as saying the inverse of. Rule number three. The sum of the current down each of the parallel branches will equal the total current. So this is a good rule to remember, especially if you're checking yourself at the end to make sure that you have solved the correct, <clears throat> that you solved the, the problem correctly. Rule number four, V equals I times R. Ohm's law. We can use V times R to almost solve every, well, pretty much solve everything in the circuit other than the R total. So that's a good formula to remember. Five, total resistance in the parallel circuit is less than the smallest resistor. So this is a good to know, keep in your head, um, so that when you're solving it, it can help troubleshoot if you have any issues. Rule number six, the parallel path with the least resistance will have the most current. So we should expect in this circuit that we have here that um, R2 path is going to have the most current and R1 path is going to have the least amount of current. So R2 is the path of least resistance. So what are we given? We're given that R total, or V total, sorry, is 12 volts DC. R1 is 1000 ohms. R2 is 220 ohms. And R3 is 560 ohms. We're going to solve for, in this circuit, I total, which is your total current for the circuit. I1, which is the current for the path of R, uh, with the R1 resistor. I2 is the path with the R2 resistor. I3 is the path with the R3 resistor. And then we're going to solve for also the total resistance. So, <clears throat> let's look at rule number one. Voltage is the same in, in parallel branches. So VT, if this is true, or this is true, we know that VT will equal V1, equal V2, will equal V3, which equals 12 volts DC. So each of those branches all have 12 volts in them. Rule number two, <clears throat> let's find the total resistance for the circuit. So our total is going to equal 1 over the inverse of R plus the inverse of 2 plus the inverse of 3. So we put the three resistors there in there, and our total for our total is 136.4 ohms. So if we look at rule number five, it tells us total resistance in a parallel circuit is less than the smallest resistor. So our answer here for our total satisfies that rule, because our smallest resistor is R2 at 220 ohms, so our total is less than that. Now let's look at rule number four, and we'll solve for the total current in the circuit. Now that we know R total, and we know V total, we can figure out I total. 
So Ohm's law. All we did was use the V equals I times R, and we manipulated the formula so that we could now solve for I. So I is going to equal your V over R. So R total is going to be your 12 volts DC divided by the 136.4 ohms, which gives us a total current in this circuit as 0 0.08798 amps. All right, and make sure we always carry our units, guys. Amps is your current, ohms is resistance, and V is your voltage. Now let's solve for the current down the path in resistor one there. So it's gonna be, we gotta remember that this path, the current's gonna be different on each of these paths, right? So I1 is gonna equal V, and V, we knew from rule one, is gonna be 12 volts, and R1 is gonna be our 1000 ohm resistor. So using this formula, I1 equals 0 0.012 amps. <clears throat> now let's solve for V or for I2. I2 is going to be your voltage over your resistor 2. So it's your 12 volts divided by your 220 ohms, which gives us a current down I2 is going to be 0 0.0546 amps. Now finally, let's solve for I3. I3 is going to be your voltage over your R3, which is going to be 12 volts over your 560 ohms, which gives us a current of I3 equals 0.02143 amps. So if we look at our answers that we got for I1, I2, and I3, and we look at the rule for rule number six, the parallel path with the least resistance will have the most current. So if we look at the I2, is the greatest current out of the three we just solved. So with 0 0.0546 amps, it is the biggest amount of current passing through, whereas I1 with the highest resistance has the least amount of current going through. So we satisfied rule number six. Now let's look at double checking our work to make sure that it satisfied rule number three. So rule number three, states that the sum of the current down each of the parallel branches will equal the total current. So IT is going to equal I1 plus I2 plus I3. IT will equal 0 0.012 plus 0 0.0546 plus 0 0.02143, which that gives us a total current, if we add those all up, of 0 0.08803 amps. So if we look up above where we solve for IT using Ohm's law, they're pretty close. It's just a matter of rounding. Um, but you know what? That, that there tells me it satisfies rule number three. So that's it for this parallel circuit. Any questions or comments, please post them below. Um, I will help you out if you put any more questions on there and need help solving a circuit. We can do that. Uh, please subscribe. I'll be doing more of these short little demos on parallel and series circuits. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.